Hello, everyone. How are you doing? Well, <laughs> first of all, sorry about my English. I will try to do my best. Uh, in the next minutes, I will talk about uh, your, your spatial information, your spatial technology, and mainly about supporting participatory approaches in tourism. Uh, my name is Ignacio Vázquez. I work for the technology and innovation area at ESRI Spain. And in ESRI, we think that geography is the science that we all need to make a better world. And by this, we mean better projects, better communities, and also better businesses. We strongly believe that science of where it's, it uh, can help us to, for smarter uh, decision making. And that's why we provide our users with advanced mapping and analytic tools uh, that unlock the potential of their data. We share this approach, we share this vision with Segitur, that is the Spanish society for bringing new technologies and innovations to uh, the tourist sector. And Segitur is uh, strongly committed in creating uh, smarter destinations by, by providing deep knowledge and digital transformation tools and also spatial enabled intelligence and that's, that's why we work together and we collaborate. Well, we all know, you better than me, than, that uh, tourism is, a, is purely a geographical sector. We can study tourism at different scales there will be different issues, different stakeholders, and different decisions to, to be made uh, depending on every scale. There are special issues that have effects on tourism, like political instabilities, like safety issues, or uh, social perceptions. But also tourism impacts on local and regional matters. Um, it can put stress on some places. It can change the way of living on some, or, or of some communities. And also, it can impact on natural resources. We need to consider geography to study all these spatial matters and to develop a sustainable tourism. So we think your spatial technology can make the difference here, and we use your spatial technology to analyze, to manage, and to promote tourism. And I will give you some quick examples. Well, this is a tourist. OK, so for promotion, <laughs> uh, by making maps, we can promote places we want to be visited. So we need to make beautiful maps and uh, easy to use web applications. But this is also about telling stories. Everyone has a story to tell. So here we talk about story maps. With these story maps, you can use pictures, videos, text, uh, along with your maps to tell your story, to, en to engage your audience, and to share your, to promote your, your destination. We can also promote places but improve, by improving their accessibility. And here we have some examples, first of all, from municipal transport company in Madrid, where you can calculate your route by bus, but also you have some touristic routes you can follow to visit museums, monuments, pubs. Second one is from Granada. Granada is a beautiful historical city, but also it's a tricky one because you have narrow and steep streets. So with this application, you can calculate the best, the shortest road, but also the, the easiest one, just in case, for instance, you, unfortunately, you have a, a mobility disability. And also, the last one is an application, a mobile app, to calculate uh, the price of your taxi trip. It's a good thing for tourists. Uh, we also explore new ways of promotion. Uh, using, for instance, 3D web things that, by the way, people loved, and things like augmented reality, also to bring new experience to people. When we talk about managing, for instance, just a couple of examples. First one is a portal from Segitur, uh, where, where it is, um, is mapped 
all the investments carried out by uh, Toro uh, Morocco Ministry of uh, Tourism. So Spanish company uh, that are, are there, they can take advantage of the nearby investments. And the second case is a study about water consumption, so we can uh, manage water supply uh, in areas and time where there are tourism present, tourists present there. And now we reach analyze. So with spatial analysis, we can answer questions where things are located, what is nearby, how things are connected, how they relate in space and in time. We can map all our indicators in order to find out spatial patterns. And also we can see how different variables behave on the same location, but also we can compare different locations. For instance, with the example you have on your right, uh, the urban observatory initiatives. By the way, you have here maybe a little small the URL, URLs just in case you want to check all this information. Also, we can use uh, intuitive tools to explore our spatial and non-spatial data and to gain um, uh, deeper insights, uh, or use uh, more complex, powerful geoprocessing tools to make complex analysis, like the urban network analysis, that um, to to study the configurations of our cities, cities and um, uh, related economical and environmental processes. Well. We think that with participatory approaches, we can improve analysis and the management and also the promotion of tourism. We want to engage the community. We want to know what they think, what they feel, what they like. And people, you know, they participate. But sometimes they don't know they are already participating. Because, for instance, we use data from social networks. We all use social networks to share our thoughts, to share our opinions. And yeah, we can use all this information, we can filter it, we can aggregate it, and finally we can map it to see things like the most photographed places in Barcelona or the most commented attractions in Madrid. But we can all, we, this way we have a deeper knowledge of tourists, we can map their feelings, we can uh, see what they demand and where they demand and make decisions in this way. We can also, uh, I'm sorry, uh, OK, there's a problem with the videos here. But we can also uh, track mobilities uh, by using data from cell phones, cell towers, from telecom companies. And once more, we can map all this data. We can use machine learning algorithms to analyze and to discover uh, mobile patterns and mobility habits, and then make decisions and build better and smarter uh, destinations. And also, we can track economic trans transactions. Uh, when, we pay, when we pay something, we are giving our information, who we are, what we buy, where we buy, when. So this way, we can discover, uh, we can find out customer profiles, customer location, consumption, time patterns, and so on. All right, but also we want to engage people in a conscious way. We want them to participate in our project, and we want them to be part of our project, but also to feel part of our project. We have been doing this by using surveys, um, so you can you know, get information. We are doing this most of the times with paper. And then we make reports with some you know, charts, tables, and so on. But we can use uh, survey apps to record information on the field in real time, and recording not only the opinion, but also the location of the people. This way, we are uh, you know, having a more uh, detailed knowledge about people's opinion, and also we can see where are different people, uh, different opinions concentrated. Maybe people that is uh, 
that have, that have a good opinion or a bad opinion of tourism is located in some specific places. So we can maybe have a more understanding of, of why this happens. We can also use uh, crowdsourcing apps uh, because you know people, they want to participate and they are going to become our cartographers and that's good for us. Uh, for instance, we have this uh, National Park uh, Memories app. Uh, this is a story map in which people can upload their, their pictures, their memories in the national parks just to celebrate the centennial of the National Park Memories in the United States. So we are using the citizen or the tourist as a sensor by providing them with different kind of apps to let them vote or let them report something, report different kind of issues, like for instance uh, with this app in Cabildo de la Palma where people can report an issue uh, in, in their island. And once more, we try to explore new ways and to try, we try to use 3D because with 3D you have a realistic view. This is an app uh, once more to, to, to get the opinion uh, of the community about one project in the city. So we offer them um, a form, they can fill uh, this form and we, we are offering two options, option A, option B, mm, I don't know which one is the best for you, but uh, we also provide um, new experiences. This is a um, virtual reality application. The, the video, once, once more, is, is not working. But anyway, I have the glasses over there, so maybe in the coffee you want to, to test it. Uh, so why? Because we want to provide more realistic experience also to people, and also we want to reach their emotions. And once more, we can map all the information and see why people in this place prefers A or B. Well, in conclusion, in conclusion, what we th what we are doing is building system of engagement, systems of engagement to involve everyone in our project. And uh, we are using tools like hubs in order to create initiatives, to feed these initiatives with different kind of data and to invite people to participate in our initiatives, not in an anonymous way, but with their identity, so they can feel part of the project through these uh, geohubs. Well, and that's all I have for you. If you have questions, maybe we can talk later. Thank you.